Meanwhile, a UN commission says the alleged sexual abuse carried out by some of its personnel in South Sudan risks staining the record of its mission. The UN Security Council has addressed the issue for the first time since claims surfaced that Ghanaian peacekeepers sexually exploited women as a displacement camp in Wau. The troops have been recalled to Juba while the UN investigates. Here's CGTN's Nick Harper from New York. The Assistant Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations, Bintu Keita, promised that the perpetrators would be held accountable. The comments come as the UN Security Council in New York grapples with yet another sex scandal that involves its peacekeeping personnel. On the whole, Ghanaian peacekeepers, peacekeepers and police serving with UNMIS have made an excellent contribution to the protection of civilian and building of durable peace in South Sudan. It is very disappointing that the behavior of some police officers risk staining that record of service as well as the mission's reputation. South Sudan's ambassador said he was deeply concerned and alarmed by the allegations, adding he hoped this was just an isolated case. However, while the UN maintains there is no indication this behavior is more widespread within the mission, this is just the latest UN sex abuse scandal. In the last decade, there have been hundreds of allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse against UN personnel in countries including Liberia, Côte d'Ivoire, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Haiti and previous claims in South Sudan. UN watchers and the UN itself admits that this conduct has the potential to undermine the work and the credibility of its peacekeeping missions. Meanwhile, the peacekeeping representative warned the UN Security Council during the meeting that with no peace in South Sudan, the mission is likely to remain for a considerable amount of time. And that, she said, would come at a considerable cost to the international community. And there are other challenges also facing South Sudan. Last week, three UN agencies warned about the threat of another famine in the coming months. Nick Harper, CGTN, New York. Well, there are several developments coming out of South Sudan then. Well, let's get you more perspective on that now. I'm joined here in studio by security expert Dr. Mustafa Ali. Thank you for joining us on Africa Live. This is an ongoing conflict. It's been ongoing now since 2013. A peacekeeper misconduct, we've just heard about that. And a possible humanitarian and famine crisis brewing in South Sudan. Is the United Nations, though, doing enough to avert a crisis there? The United Nations is doing something, but it's not doing enough. Uh, it's been very slow in responding to the challenges that are facing South Sudan. It's been extremely slow in, in punishing those that are making it difficult to have peace in South Sudan, particularly the leaders of uh, uh, the various warring factions. So it's, 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 it's not really been uh, satisfactory, um, or rather the UN has not uh, posted satisfactory results in South Sudan. Uh, we just heard uh, the UN, so the South Sudan's ambassador to the UN there opposing an arms embargo against the country. Uh, South Sudanese authorities have constantly downplayed the crisis in South Sudan. Is there a disconnect here about what is exactly happening and the leadership situation? Yeah, the, there is a huge disconnect between the leadership in South Sudan and its own people. There is a huge disconnect between South Sudan and the international community. And uh, the, the reason for this is that the people who are really making it difficult to achieve peace in South Sudan are in leadership position. And one thing that the UN should have done a long time ago is to really uh, go down on hard, especially on Salva Kiir. His time uh, uh, has been up a uh, uh, long time ago. And so the, the, the kind of leadership that you see there does not recognize that there is famine in South Sudan. And so South Sudanese are dying because of lack of food and water. That particular leadership does not recognize that people are being killed by their own soldiers and militias that they have put in place to, 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 to fight for them. And so that situation is, is, is dire. Right. In a lot of the dialogue, though, and the, and the uh, looking for peace in South Sudan, a lot of that dialogue has been left to regional blocs, such as say, IGAD here. I mean, is it time to change strategy? Is it time for a change of approach in how to deal with South Sudan and 
particularly in the talks that could bring lasting peace? Not really, Beatrice. One thing that we need to take note is that peace talks in the context of uh, international and regional security is normally or rather are multi-layered. And so the African peace and security architecture is what the United Nations also uses uh, to make sure that its peacekeeping operations succeed. IGAD is a part of the sub-regional uh, uh, peace architecture mechanism that the, U that the, the Africa Union has, has designed. What is required is for these uh, various levels to work seamlessly together. In some cases, they seem to be competing, and this is what is complicating the uh, uh, attainment of peace. And then the countries that constitute IGAD seems to be having competing interests in South Sudan. Well, it's strange, though, that uh, against the background of, view of all these developments, there's still going to be probably an election going on in South Sudan. So, really, what's the future for South Sudan? Yeah, I, I, one of the things is that I think they should not really have elections in the context of severe uh, uh, security challenges in, in, in South Sudan. They should put that aside. The first thing, and this is what they should prioritize, is to really make sure that there is... Uh, uh, some, some, some stability in that country. South Sudan, since it gained independence, has really not seen peace. And what is going to really make it see peace is that, first of all, there must be a cessation of hostilities, and then they can go to elections. All right, uh, Dr. Mustafa Ali, we'll leave it there for the moment, but thank you very much for your insights you. on the uh, program.